The Maypole project was set up to support children who have complex medical needs and complex disabilities mm. and their families. Um, we support the whole family from whenever they come into contact with the project, which can be diagnosis or can be sometime later. Sometimes, sadly, can be after a child has died. And we aim to support them as long as they want, um, but certainly through the family's lifetimes, uh, through different forms of support, um, counselling groups, therapies, um, and social activities. I mean, initially, what we're looking is for any clubs, any place that junior could join after school, which is extremely hard to find. Um, and then Maple came, uh, where uh, about four years ago, I think uh, Maple Active started, and junior was one of the first uh, children who joined, and it was it was extremely important. We use it for a variety of reasons. Um, primarily, I use the project to have counselling for myself. Um, my husband's attended a couple of times too for couples um, therapy, which has been very helpful, particularly the counselling for myself, which I've attended for, for many years. And gave me time, a little bit of respite. Um, gave Junior something to do that he loves and four years later we're still there twice a week. It's his time for socialising, it's my time to have coffee with other mothers and it just um, it's really important. There's also the social side. We've mixed with um, other parents um, on the coffee mornings, or, or I have, and myself and my husband have attended some of the wider fundraising social um, events like the ball and um, curry nights and things like that. The aim of the Maypole project is to alleviate the chronic stresses and strains that families face from the point of diagnosis and through the child's lifetimes. People talk about it being like a roller coaster, but I think it's worse than that if you think of how your stomach just goes and how things, a parent earlier described it as rocky water. So we're there to really provide the constant for them through the troubled times so they can come backwards and forwards to the project as they need it, when they need it, and how they need it will work to form a pattern of support around them rather than prescribing it to them. We never did, and I thought I will never have to use it. Uh, unfortunately, um, you don't recognise that disability in family, it affects the whole family. It sometimes effects of it doesn't show immediately. Uh, like in our case, Junior was diagnosed when he was two years old. Um, but uh, we recently came as a family through family crisis and not just, uh, it, it actually had nothing to do with Junior, he was doing great. It's kind of rest of us, myself and my other children, we've got two um, now grown-up children, and we then ask for uh, counselling. So we provide um, counselling and therapies, play therapy, uh, child play sessions, sensory play sessions, um, and groups and we have a monthly drop-in for parents to come and literally have coffee and a cake and meet with their children and other meeting other parents. It, that helps them really come out of isolation because it can be very isolating. It improves people's lives in many ways. I think it makes it easier for parents and carers because they have a sort of allocated time slot where we take control. Um, and sort of look after their children for them so they can go and get a cup of coffee or whatever they need. It also, as I said, allows the children to grow so they've developed into, lots, lots of the children I've worked with, I've worked with them for a few years now so you've seen them grow from children who maybe one time wouldn't even walk through the door without having a bit of a meltdown or struggling because of all sorts of problems, maybe autism or something and uh, those children are now running around, playing, kicking the ball, or doing all these sorts of skills that you never would have seen when they first started. So it helps the children develop in that aspect. And on top of that, we also provide a lot of social activities um, from our Maypole Active weekly um, inclusive sports clubs. The children go on outings. Um, we have soft play evenings. Um, we try again, we explore different avenues of different events for the children. That then gives the parents a break, but it also gives the children a place to have time away from treatment regimes and medicalised home lives. 
um, and yeah, away from the, all that routine, having fun. Well, obviously, juniors clubs are, um, give me respite uh, and the, the flexibility of the service. I think that's, that's the big issue. That's not just one thing. It's not just clubs. It's just not um, counselling. It's not just this one. We have outings, we have other things. So that, that's uh, the flexibility and that the Maple Project listens what parents need. Uh, for me personally, I really like the principle of the lifeline for a lifetime. I think that's incredibly reassuring for families. It certainly is for me, so that you know that that promise is always there and you can access, we can access the support as, as and when we need it and it may tail off but then it may come back at certain times where the need is greater. So I think that's a really good principle in this day of age of, oh, it's often somebody has say six sessions of counselling and then that's sort of closed, whereas here it, it is an open door, which I think is, is the ideal, the absolute ideal. The most powerful part of, of the job is when we see the lifeline being used. So a family's come in for support, they've, they've taken whatever they've needed at that time out of, out of the support team, um, counselling or whatever the package of support has been made around them, as I've described. They'll sometimes then stop the service, move away from it. We always say you can come back whenever. When they do come back, it can be weeks later, it can sometimes be years later, and say, I'd like to tap into your services again. That's the point where I think, yes, the actual lifeline for a lifetime really works. Um, and that, we, that means we have to be here for a life, li lifetime for the families as well. For me, the power is sort of when you see the children who First of all, the ones you've worked with for years grow and become these amazing individuals with all sorts of skills and behavioural aspects that you never thought they were going to have. Maybe not you didn't think, but you never saw when they first came to us. But as time's gone on, they've flourished and they've done really well. And not only that, we then have new families coming and it's amazing to see them prosper as well. And it's exciting when a new family comes because you think, well, those children in two years time what will they be like they'll be completely different and I'd like to hope that we're part of the reason uh, down to that obviously working alongside school and parents and carers um, but hopefully <laughs> they'll flourish into amazing young people. At the moment we are we're seeing a lot more families being referred through to the project we've extended our services through to Greenwich so we cover Bromley, Lewisham, Lambeth, Southwark and Greenwich but we get requests for support from beyond that area um, and we know we only cover 30% of the families in the area so we really need to increase our income levels to match the need that we know is there. So here we are in 2018, 15 years from the start of the Maypole project where it was me working part-time. Now we have a team of nine people, all still part-time, but a strong team, over 60 volunteers. Um, we have over 500 families that we support overall, over a thousand clients each year. Um, and that's all thanks to our amazing supporters and sponsors, donors, incredible team of volunteers that back up all the work that we do. And as I said before, we need to grow, so we need all the support we can gain to get, take us forward to the next 15 years and beyond. Thank you. Is there anything else you wanted? No, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs>